Hey guys, Bingo Cat here. Ah, Windows Vista, the one operating system that everyone seemed to hate back in the day. Windows Vista was released in January of 2007, and no one can deny that 2007 was an overall fantastic year for technology. The original iPhone was released, Facebook was starting to boom, Nintendo Wii's were flying off the shelves, Google Street View became a thing, Netflix started its online streaming service, and HD TVs were finally starting to become affordable, among other things. But one thing that a lot of people could overall agree wasn't that good was Microsoft's then brand new operating system, Windows Vista, the operating system that was supposed to replace the 5 year old Windows XP. Even though the operating system was highly anticipated, it received a lot of negative reception from people for various reasons, and even years later, Windows Vista is widely regarded as one of the worst operating systems ever made. But. Was Windows Vista really that bad? Windows Vista, for an operating system that took so long to be released, seemed like it would have had much better reception than it actually received. When Windows Vista was released, the hardware requirements to run Windows Vista were relatively high at the time, and were a lot higher than the requirements to run Windows XP. One of the main features that was touted in Windows Vista was Vista's new graphical user interface, Windows Arrow. Microsoft intended for Windows Vista's user interface to be overall nicer and cleaner looking than the user interfaces from all the previous versions of Windows, and Microsoft did a good job with that in my opinion. Windows Arrow, however, didn't work with a lot of the computers that Windows Vista supposedly could run on, and Windows Arrow also took a hit on system resources for a lot of PCs, with laptop users reporting that Windows Arrow would shorten their battery life. Many computers back in 2006 were sold as being quote-unquote Windows Vista capable, and most users probably took that to mean that it would run any version of Windows Vista fine, no matter what hardware they used. When Windows Vista was released, however, it became clear that Windows Vista capable meant that the hardware only had to meet the absolute minimum requirements to run the most basic versions of Windows Vista, such as Windows Vista Basic, thus meaning that these PCs couldn't run the highly touted Windows Arrow interface. Reportedly, even Microsoft's own senior executives had this issue, with Mike Nash, the former corporate vice president of Windows product management, having commented that he now has a $2100 email machine because his laptop lacked the appropriate graphics chip to run the full versions of Windows Vista. One of the most common complaints of Windows Vista was that it was just simply slower than Windows XP. Tom's Hardware, for instance, published benchmarks when Windows Vista was released that showed that Windows Vista ran programs slower than Windows XP did on the same hardware. Many lower-end and mid-range machines that came with Windows Vista barely exceeded Windows Vista's system requirements. Microsoft did think performance might be an issue for some PCs, which is why Microsoft released Windows Vista Home Basic, which came without some of the more resource-intensive features of Vista, like the Windows Aero interface. However, many consumers that bought Windows Vista-capable PCs before the launch of Windows Vista were disappointed to find out that they could only run the lower-end versions of Windows Vista, such as Windows Vista Home Basic, due to their PCs not meeting the system requirements to run the full versions of Windows Vista. Because of this, a class action lawsuit was filed against Microsoft in early 2008, claiming that Microsoft deceived users with a Windows Vista-capable marketing campaign, as most users thought they would be able to run the full version of Windows Vista, and not just a stripped-down Windows Vista Home Basic. Nothing ever came out of the lawsuit for most users, though, as the lawsuit was stripped of its class action status in early 2009. Original versions of Windows Vista also had stability issues for whatever reasons. Original versions of Windows Vista were known for crashing fairly regularly, but this was nothing new to the Windows line, as Windows XP had very similar problems when it was first released. One of the big reasons Windows XP was so successful after Windows XP Service Pack 2 
was because it took the stability and security of the Windows NT line and successfully merged it with the hardware and software compatibility of the Windows 9X line. Speaking of compatibility, another major issue regarding Windows Vista was the lack of driver compatibility when Vista was released. Many pieces of hardware just simply weren't compatible with Vista when Vista was released, due to the driver model of Vista being completely different than the one from Windows XP. As a result, new drivers had to be written specifically for Windows Vista, which a lot of hardware manufacturers neglected to do out of the gate. Also, some people complained that Windows Vista was a memory hog, and as a result, many people felt that the operating system was indeed bloated, but this was actually just an incorrect observation of the operating system. Windows Vista shifted to using a new memory management model, with the idea being that free memory is wasted memory, and so why not use all the memory that is there? Vista was actually supposed to speed up system performance by using this new memory management model, but people didn't understand there was even a new memory management model in Windows Vista, which contributed to the misconception that the operating system was bloated. The same incorrect observation was also made regarding hard drives, as many people thought since Windows Vista kept constantly accessing your hard disk, Windows Vista must be inefficient which wasn't true at all and was just a result of the new memory management model of Windows Vista. Regarding the problems with system requirements I just mentioned though, if you did have the appropriate hardware to run Vista, Windows Vista was a gorgeous and efficient operating system and is one of the best looking operating systems Microsoft has designed in my opinion, and even today the design holds up. And not only that, if you had a supported graphics chip, Windows Era was actually designed to speed up the user interface, as Era was designed to run off your computer's graphics card instead of your computer's CPU like it did in Windows XP. By offloading the user interface to the computer's graphics card, this was actually supposed to speed up your computer because this frees up the CPU to do other things. Probably one of the biggest complaints regarding Windows Vista though was Windows Vista's new user account control system. User Account Control, or UAC for short, was supposed to be a big leap forward for security in Windows, as many actions taken by programs on your computer that require administrator rights would now prompt you to give it administrator rights, instead of just automatically getting administrator rights if you are logged in with an administrator account, like on Windows XP. Now the idea of UAC was and still is a great idea, but unfortunately this led to an excessive number of UAC prompts while using Windows Vista, and would take control of the entire screen every time a prompt showed up. Due to the frequency of these messages, many users stopped reading the prompts entirely, and would simply just click yes in order to get the prompt to go away, defeating the entire purpose of the UAC. There was an option to turn off the UAC completely, but this was not recommended by Microsoft or security professionals, and personally, I don't recommend it either. While this issue was never resolved in Windows Vista, Microsoft went out of its way to make sure users didn't see UAC prompts as much in Windows 7 as they did in Windows Vista, in order to increase the effectiveness of UAC prompts when users did see them. It's a robot! There's a bomb in the bag! I think this might be a bomb disposal robot, Roy. I'm just having a couple of problems with it. What kind of operating system does it use? It's uh... Vista! We're going to die! <laughs> Due to all the major issues, consumers and businesses were very hesitant to move to Windows Vista, and instead opted to remain on Windows XP until Microsoft came out with its next major operating system. Many manufacturers offered the option to downgrade from Windows Vista to Windows XP, and many people took the offer to downgrade. However, a good chunk of PCs made in 2007 and after met the full system requirements to run Windows Vista, and the performance of Windows Vista was improved greatly when Service Pack 1 was released, with focus on increasing performance in file copy operations, hibernation time, and disk defragmentation speed, among other things. Regardless, the damage was already done, 
and many people still refused to move to Windows Vista. Microsoft didn't necessarily help matters either, as when Microsoft released Service Pack 3 for Windows XP in 2008, this just confused a lot of people even more, as people saw Microsoft releasing major updates for Windows XP to mean that XP was still a current, perfectly usable operating system, and, in addition, Microsoft also postponed the date that retail sales of Windows XP would end, from January 30th, 2008 to June 30th, 2008. However, on an effort to prove that Windows Vista wasn't as bad as people thought it was, Microsoft ran an experiment called the Mojave Experiment, shortly after the release of Windows Vista Service Pack 1. In the Mojave Experiment, people with negative interpretations of Windows Vista were shown a demonstration of a supposedly new version of Windows called Windows Mojave. The people in the experiment were told that Mojave was a new version of Windows, and weren't aware that Mojave was actually just Windows Vista with a different name. At the end, many people gave positive reviews of Windows Mojave, and were astonished when they were told that Mojave was actually just Windows Vista under a different name. So it's just an informal discussion. I'll be asking some questions and you just answer them as honestly as, as you can. So why haven't you upgraded to Vista yet? Just the bad things I've heard about it. I just heard negative things. I never tried it myself. I, I wouldn't touch the thing. It's horrible. We have so many problems. It crashes. <laughs> I've heard nothing but bad things about Vista, really. I'd like you to rate your overall favorability of Windows Vista. Okay. The paper. Okay, so you gave Windows Vista a zero. Today, I'm going to show you a little bit about Windows Mojave. Okay. which is actually uh, the newest version of Windows. I want to see it. <laughs> I want to see how it works. Oh, yeah. Wow. It's sick. Yes. That's great. So, oh, that's great. I love gadgets. Man, it's awesome. Oh, what do you think of this new upgrade? Really cool. It's very impressive. The speed is incredible, right? I need an upgrade, and that looks like everything that I would need. That's 10, definitely. All right. Well, I have to confess to you, this is Vista. Really? What? Are you serious? <laughs> <laughs> this is Windows Vista. Son of a gun. Yeah, you got me. I had no idea that you could do all this with Windows Vista. It represents a lot of things that uh, you could only dream of um, a few years back. Actually, it's totally different than what I had heard it would be like. I'm impressed. I mean, it looks awesome. I mean, it just seems so easy. I'm getting it. <laughs> I would say it's an awesome program, but you have to see for yourself. By performing this experiment, Microsoft was able to prove that a lot of people didn't like Windows Vista just because they've heard or seen negative things about the operating system earlier in its life. The Mojave experiment was also criticized from several groups though, with GadgetZone.com claiming that Microsoft cherry-picked positive statements and didn't let the participants actually try out the software themselves. So in conclusion, I can confidently say that where originally Windows Vista was bad, once hardware manufacturers released the proper drivers to run Windows Vista, and once Windows Vista Service Pack 1 was released, most major issues with Windows Vista were resolved, and Windows Vista overall became a fairly solid operating system. The only thing that really stopped further adoption of Windows Vista was the damage to Windows Vista's name. I used to have a teacher in high school who would say that Windows 7 is basically Windows Vista with all the problems fixed, and in a way, that's true. Windows 7 took a back seat on introducing new features in Windows and decided to focus on security, performance, and other under-the-hood improvements to the Windows operating system. But at the end of the day, Windows 7 is really similar to Windows Vista. So was Windows Vista really that bad? At first. Yes, but after about a year and a half, most of the problems Windows Vista was infamous for were fixed. And at the end of the day, Windows Vista was overall a really solid operating system. Thanks for watching, guys. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And please check out my Twitter, Instagram, and Discord, linked down below in the video description. As always, I thank you guys for watching. Goodbye.